Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection on this November 2nd, 2022 here from First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Natalie. And we are going to read our lectionary texts for today and discuss them a little bit and see if we can come up with some sort of, uh, you know, that we would listen well to the Lord and hopefully come to some better understanding of the scriptures that we're reading and uh, think about ways to apply it to our lives. So glad that you can join us today. Let me open us in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this time and this day. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that you give us to read your word. Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit would be present during this time and let us be transformed and um, become more and more like Jesus, uh, the person that you're, you're calling us to, uh, to follow and to trust and to, and to obey. Um, Lord, I'm grateful that you have called us and by your spirit empowered us. And um, we just really do appreciate and thank you for this time. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. We're going to start this morning with Psalm 89, uh, verses 1 through 18. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord, a God feared in the counsel of the holy ones, great and awesome above all that are around him? O Lord, God of hosts, who is as mighty as you, O Lord? Your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule the raging of the sea. When its waves rise, you still them. You crushed Rahab like a carcass. You scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. The heavens are yours, the earth also is yours. The world and all that is in it, you have founded them. The north and the south, you created them. Tabor and Hermon joyously praise your name. You have a mighty arm, strong is your hand, high your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Happy are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. They exalt in your name all day long and extol your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength. By your favor, our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord, our King to the Holy One of Israel. Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem, he gathers the outcasts from Israel, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds, he determines the number of the stars, he gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power, his understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden, he casts the wicked to the ground, sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his steadfast love. Our Hebrew prophetic words today are coming from Zephaniah chapter 2. Gather together, gather, O shameless nation, before you are driven away like the drifting chaff, before there comes upon you the fierce anger of the Lord, before there comes upon you the day of the Lord's wrath. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the land who do his commands. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you may be hidden on the day of the Lord's wrath. For Gaza shall be deserted, and Ashkelon shall become a desolation. Ashdod's people shall be driven out at noon, and Ekron shall be uprooted. 
Ah, inhabitants of the sea coast, you nation of the Cherethites, the word of the Lord is against you. O Canaan, land of the Philistines, and I will destroy you until no inhabitant is left. And you, O seacoast, shall be pastures, meadows for shepherds, and folds for flocks. The seacoast shall become the possession of the remnant of the house of Judah, on which they shall pasture. And in the houses of Ascalon they shall lie down at evening, for the Lord their God will be mindful of them and restore their fortunes. I have heard the taunts of Moab and the revilings of the Ammonites, how they have taunted my people and made boasts against their territory. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Moab shall become like Sodom and the Ammonites like Gomorrah, a land possessed by nettles and salt pits and a waste forever. The remnant of my people shall plunder them and the survivors of my nation shall possess them. This shall be their lot in return for their pride, because they scoffed and boasted against the people of the Lord of hosts. The Lord will be terrible against them. He will shrivel all the gods of the earth, and to him shall bow down, each in its place, all the coasts and islands of the nations. You also, O Ethiopians, shall be killed by my sword. And he will stretch out his hand against the north and, and destroy Assyria. And he will make Nineveh a desolation, a dry waste like the desert. Herds shall lie down in it. Every wild animal, the desert owl and the screech owl shall lodge on its capitals. The owl shall hoot at the window. The raven croak on the threshold for its cedar work will be laid bare. In this, the exultant city that lived secure, that said to itself, I am, and there is no one else. What a desolation it has become, a lair for wild animals. Everyone who passes by it hisses and shakes the fist. And from Revelations, chap Revelation chapter 16, verses 1 through 11. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple telling the seven angels, Go and pour out on the earth the seven bowls of the wrath of God. So the first angel went and poured his bowl on the earth, and a foul and painful sore came on those who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped its image. The second angel poured his bowl into the sea, and it became like the blood of a corpse, and every living thing in the sea died. The third angel poured his bowl into the rivers and the springs of water, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the water say, you are just, O Holy One, who are and were, for you have judged these things. Because they shed the blood of saints and prophets, you have given them blood to drink. It is what they deserve. And I heard the altar respond, Yes, O Lord God, the Almighty, your judgments are true and just. The fourth angel poured his bowl on the sun, and it was allowed to scorch people with fire. They were scorched by the fierce heat, but they cursed the name of God, who had authority over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. The fifth angel poured his bowl on the throne of the beast, and its kingdom was plunged into darkness. People gnawed their tongues in agony and cursed the God of heaven because of their pains and sores, and they did not repent of their deeds. Our gospel text today comes from Luke chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for eighteen years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, 
and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And our final, final psalm today is Psalm 33. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Praise the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with a harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all their host by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea as in a bottle. He put the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all humankind. From where he sits enthroned, he watches all the inhabitants of the earth, he who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a vain hope for victory, and by its great might it cannot save. Truly, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God. You know, I kind of want to start by looking at uh, Psalm 1 and then Psalm 33, those two that we just read today. And I'm, I'm feeling that um, the other texts are really just kind of summarized <laughs> in right. so many ways by the Psalm. Um, you know, Psalm 1 so familiar. We, we, we've all read it so many times um, and it really just sets out the, the distinction between those who follow God and those right. who don't. You know, happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. Um, the people who follow after God are like trees planted by streams of water. They yield its fruit in the season. They, they do, they prosper in that which they do. And the wicked receive judgment. Um, right. You know, justice is being exercised against them by the Lord. Uh, Psalm 33 uh, just seems to be a larger uh, explanation of those things. Uh, those right. who are righteous are rejoicing in the Lord. Uh, they praise the Lord and um, you know, God provides uh, righteousness and justice, steadfast love, all of these things. Um, all of the earthly hopes that we can put our faith into will ultimately disappoint. Right. But it's God who... Who, who provides that which we need. And so I think if we remember those, uh, those characteristics and attributes of God, um, his goodness, his righteousness, his steadfast love that endures forever, uh, his provision for uh, the faithful, all of those things, um, I think it, and, and his justice that right. is, is executed against the unbelievers or the unrighteous, um, keeping those two attributes of God in, in, in healthy tension 
I think is just really important for us in understanding anything that we read in Scripture. Right. I agree. <laughs> um, I think that was really controversial, yeah. right? That was just like, oh, I yes, Joel yes. is just saying some new profound things. No, I think that's no, just I, the, that's, the kind yeah. of the basics of it, right? But, right. but those basics become um, just really... Uh, uh, important for us as we look at the different texts that we've read, um, the Zephaniah text. Let's just let's just jump to Zephaniah right. because how many of you have read Zephaniah? How many of you read him regularly? How many of you reflect upon this prophet of the time? Um, Zephaniah is one of those prophets that, uh, from the beginning, he talks about the coming judgment upon. Judah, but not just upon Judah, those enemies that surround. And right. so um, he's, he's writing, obviously, during the time of the kings. It's the divided kingdom. There's the northern kingdom. There's the southern kingdom. We know that most of the kings behave very poorly. We know that even in Judah, which um, was the, uh, the line that is descended directly from David, some kings are okay. Most kings are bad, uh, but we know that Zephaniah is writing during the time of Josiah where there were some reforms that were taking place, right. and it was a good thing, but then their reforms fall short, and they fall back into idolatry, they fall back into oppressing the poor, they fall back into... Uh, trying to gain for themselves um, economic benefits in alliances with pagan nations and all these kind of things uh, in a way having the, um, yeah, you know, I, I don't even want to say even just having the appearance of good religion. They, they intended to practice well. Right. But they were falling short. And the prophets would come, and they would speak correctives, uh, and and the people didn't respond faithfully all the time. They were like, "Yeah, yeah, 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 we're we're okay, we're doing all right, we've right. got all of the religious stuff going on, and we're currently economically successful, which is that kind of well, and I think false it was, security, right? I think it was last week we talked about the exterior versus what's going on inside. You know, I, like you said, I think they were trying to do what was right and they knew the law and even if you go back to that Psalm 1 it talks about you know their delight is in the law and the law in and of itself is not bad right it's right. just when that law I think takes precedent over people and right. we're going to see that in Luke in just a moment when right. Jesus says you know that this is this is what should be done this is right love your neighbor love love people and um, but um, I think I just wanted to say, you know, as you were going back and looking at Psalm 1 and looking at Psalm 33, I think the other passages, the Zephaniah, the Revelation, the Luke, all three of those, they're, they're heavy-handed on the judgment and the justice side. But it is so important, like you said. I'm glad you started with that because understanding the nature of God to the point that we can, right? And so, but understanding the character and the nature of God is important because he didn't just go after these people. I mean, he gave them the law and, and there is this love and there is this care. He wants better for them. Yes, right. and he gave them direction and he, you know, but there is accountability. It's not just right. this empty, here's the law, do with it what you do. There is accountability right. with that. And and that, that Zephaniah passage, again, the chapter 2 that we read, you know, chapter 1 was, uh, if you've been keeping up with your lectionary text, chapter 1 was the judgment that was coming against Judah for their unrighteousness mm -hmm. and all of the different ways that they had fallen short. But then the chapter 2 is the judgment on Israel's enemies. So, again, it's just one of those things where I think um, as believers, we like to think, oh yeah, well God is always on our side. And here's the thing, he is. He is always on our side. Uh, but that doesn't mean um, that there are going to be no consequences for the ways that, that we have messed up. There are always going to be, you know, God's judgment is perfect and God's justice is pure. Um, but the judgment that we read in Zephaniah 2 is, hey Judah, it's going to be okay. You've right. been oppressed. You've been judged. And they have exceeded even that right. boundary that I had set up for them. And so I'm going to restore you this whole thing about um, 
you know, Gaza, Ashkelon, Ashdod, and Ekron, those were the four big cities of the, of the Philistines, and those were the historical enemies of Judah. Those were the people that, um, you know, David was battling against and all that kind of stuff. Those, um, those, uh, the city where when they had captured the ark uh, during the time of Samuel and um, they had received the judgment against them for, from having like the presence of the Lord in, in their possession. They didn't right. actually possess, possess it. Right. They, they, they you know, yes. who can possess yes. God, right? Um, but but the, what we're seeing here in that chapter two is uh, the restoration, again, this redemptive cycle that God brings. Okay, you've stepped out of line. Judgment has come. There's been repentance. Now there's going to be restoration. And how we see that over and over and over again in Scripture, the, the persistent, um, the persistent uh, uh, patience of God where he looks at his people and he says, hey, um, let's try this again. again. <laughs> right. Uh, which then does lead us into that Luke passage because, again, we have Jesus who is, is healing a crippled woman. This is Luke 13. This is still early in his ministry, but we have seen Jesus healing people. We have seen him uh, performing miracles and uh, and here he is again in a synagogue. Right. And I just keep thinking, like, this is the place where the people go to worship God and encounter God on a regular basis. And the image of this, um, the, the, the synagogue keeper, um, you know, he's, he's indignant. And it's like, right. this, this woman who's been ill for 18 years, crippled for 18 years, is healed. And he's like, He's Come upset. six days to be healed on those days. I was like, well, he, he had 18 years to heal this woman. He couldn't do it. Right. And Jesus shows up and heals, and he's mad. Right. Right, it's almost, I mean, I don't know if it wasn't what had happened. I mean, it's almost comical, like you said. You've had 18 years, and you couldn't do it. And then you're upset, right? Because it didn't happen within the context of what you felt like it should right. happen. Yeah. I mean, it's you know, it, it's you had this box in which you kept God, right? And God and demonstrated at those times, right? There's only these times, that and you think available. that you can open the box and then close it up. You know, we know how God works; we have it under control, right? And Jesus shows up and says, nope, we're doing something new. And it's amazing. And it's better. Because I'm not in the box. I'm living. I'm walking amongst you. The kingdom is present. Uh, this is the purpose of Sabbath. Right. To he rest in the presence of God. To, to hearken back to creation. That all of creation was good and very good. Well, clearly we see being crippled is not a good thing. It's right. being bound by uh, Satan for those 18 years. And, and I was just thinking about this as I was reading it because, um, you know, uh, in, in Genesis chapter 3, we know that, uh, that Eve had not been named Eve yet, that she was actually, her name was woman. Her name was woman. You had Ish, man, Isha, woman. And... And Isha was tempted by the devil, and therefore sin came into the world. And we he, and see, we, we have an unnamed woman. And I don't know. I think Jesus knows her name. Woman, created by God as the person I wanted you to be. No longer be bound by Satan. Live in Sabbath reality of healing and wholeness. And so there's a there's a. a, a a recapitulation of the creation story, the fall story, and then the redemptive story, all right here in Luke chapter 13. Um, she's been bound, now she's set free. The opponents were put to shame, but everybody else rejoices. So we get to rejoice. And then we jump over to Revelation, right? And Revelation, and we just kind of go, well, once again, you've got a world that doesn't repent even though they've been given opportunity to repent. Right. 
I don't even know what more I really want to say about that. If you have anything, right. like some massive insights on that Revelation 16. Um, instead of repenting, like verse 11, they cursed the God of heaven because of their pains and sores right. and did not repent of their deeds. Right. And how the angel cries out, You are just, O Holy One. You have judged these things. You have... You know, given them blood to drink, it's what they deserve, and and I think that's just kind of when I think about this story, or when I think about any of those things. You know what that that is what I deserve. That is what we deserve because of our own unrighteousness. But this is where thanks be to God that we do have Jesus Christ in our lives, who paid that price for what we deserve. He took our sins upon himself, uh, nailed to the tree, died the death that we deserve. And so when we think about coming future judgment, mm -hmm. we remember that, that so much judgment had already been poured out upon Jesus. And if we can live in that reality that he's paid the price for us, we don't need to fear the future anymore. This is not for us intended to be a fearful thing. This is intended for us to be a rejoicing thing that we remember that God is ultimately the one who defeats evil, punishes wickedness, uh, removes the injustice from his creation and reestablishes things to right. And so the challenge for all of us is, can we live in that reality now? Can we live lives that are pleasing to God? Can we live lives that are uh, encouraging and still challenging to one another, you know, live a life of faith and keep pursuing Jesus. Right. And, you know, when when those things do come or when we do fall short, which we will, you know, we you cry out to God in repentance. You cry out to God asking forgiveness. You, you know, it's not, you know, here it's they curse God. I mean, not our place. Our place is to to rest in Him, mm. rather than somehow feel like we have some ability to condemn or curse or or whatever. That's not our role. We can cry out to Him, rest in Him, reach out to Him, um, and with that, because the price has been paid, we can repent. And you know, it, it's they did not repent of their deeds. If they had. You know, right. That's right. that's what it took. You right. know, this repentance and this. Even these final revelation judgments, um, uh, I guess you know, were intended that people could have repented. Like, wow, here comes some, here comes some day of the Lord kind of stuff. You know, and isn't that what we read about? Is that the uh, that was the um, psalm? Was the Psalm eighty nine? I'm trying to remember off the top of my yes, head. Yes, I believe it. Was but that uh, but you know the the day of the Lord, these kind of things. You know when He comes. Um, yeah. Can't get there. Can't get there <laughs> fast enough. Fingers. Right. Um, well, right. You know the heavens declaring His wonders, awesome power, mighty. Yep. You scattered your enemies. Mighty is the yeah. Mighty is your your arm. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's like uh, we who live in faith um, are warned by, but should be encouraged and uh, even rejoice in the fact that God is coming uh, to finally deal with all of evil and set all things to right again. And we who have been bound and crippled in our sins have been set free from those things and can live upright lives uh, in the presence of God and with each other as we learn to love God more and love our neighbors more um, We get to experience the reality and the blessings of who, who we've been created to be and so uh, Again, I think we just see it uh, throughout all of scripture that ongoing pattern of, uh, of God's love for us uh, And his authority over all creation Oh, and that verse 14 in that Psalm 89, righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Right. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. And so, as like you said, as we look forward with hope, we know that he is righteous. We know he is just. That is the foundation of who he is. Right. And that love and um, 
said that slab in right. faithfulness is is who God is. Right. And it's offered who else to is, us. Who else is like the Lord? <laughs> right. Wow. Wow, good stuff. Challenging stuff each and every day. Uh, I am uh, challenged by God's word, and I think that's kind of the whole point. He intends these words to be transformative of us. Uh, he intends his Holy Spirit to continue to work in our lives. And if it were easy, um, I don't think Jesus would have need to, to die on the cross. Right. If it were easy, I don't think we'd need a whole book of story after story after story after story of here's what people were doing, here's how God responded. You know, we, we, if it were easy, we wouldn't need this. But Wouldn't it be the ongoing, the ongoing redemptive cycle yeah. because yeah. it does happen again and again, again, again. and again. Yep, but so. uh, God's, God is good and God is patient and God is loving and kind and just and uh, all in 100% effectiveness all the time. So good stuff. All right, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. I, yeah. Okay, yeah, good. nothing else you want to find out on that? Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Good. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you close this in a word of prayer? All right. Gracious and loving Father, we thank you for your steadfast love and your faithfulness to us. And I pray that that we are transformed into the beings that you are calling us to be, and that as we as we do that, and as we live in this world that um, is so different than what we have uh, a future hope to see you know that they everything will be set right with you and um, but with that as we live in this world I pray that as we are transformed that um, that we are transformed to be like you and not that the world transforms us but the other way around and uh, just help us to rest in you and to uh, call out to you in praise and in worship and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. I uh, certainly am glad that you guys could join us today. And if you have any questions or concerns, please do call up to the church or email us, and we'd be happy to listen to your concerns and pray with you. Um, but we certainly look forward to the time that we can worship together again. And uh, and that'll be uh, this coming Sunday, 1030. We have a lot going on on Sunday. we got a baptism. we got uh, the Lord's Supper. And I think it's just going to be a great day. So if you can make it, Join us in worship. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.